Chuck, I grew up in New York City. I know that. And I thought in my naivete, you know, when you're five or six, every city has tall buildings like this, mm -hmm. I would say to myself. And that's just not the case, right? And, you know, you visit other cities. Their tallest building is, you know, 20 stories tall or 50. Mm -hmm. it's, there are more tall buildings today, but when I was growing up, I just found tall buildings fascinating. And I would drag my telescope to the tallest of the tall buildings, and that was my little sort of uh, hideout from civilization where I could commune with the cosmos. Nice. But there's something interesting about tall buildings is they see farther away than you do on the ground floor. Okay. They see? see farther away. Okay. Okay. That's why the crow's nest of old sailing ships, right. hot, that's why yeah. they were very tall. Right. Not only to hold the sails, but the net, the, what they call the crow's nest up there, right. that person is the one that was looking for land. Land ho! <laughs> because they... It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are you being all judgy about the... Don't, don't do that to the land. Why are you judging the land like that? Nobody... <laughs> That land is able to do and see anyone it pleases. <laughs> you up here talking about land ho. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> so they will be the first to see it. They will right. be the first to see land. And because they're higher up. Okay. And so they say, you know, all oh, north of the starboard bow, blah, 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 blah. Everybody be looking, waiting for it. They will see it later than that person did. Right. It provided the ship is headed in that direction. Okay. okay. That is because Earth is round. Okay. It's simple fact. So you've been paid to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the payroll, Neil. <laughs> they got to you. They okay. got to you, Neil. <laughs> this is how that happened. <laughs> All right. So now I'm at the top of a building the Empire State Building, and on the 86th floor, they used to open that to astronomy groups. They might still, I haven't checked in a while, because that was a, it's a, um, it's an outdoor observation, uh, walk around, observation deck. Yeah, yeah, observation deck. And the top of the rock, of 30 rock, that's an open outdoor space. And so you want it to be open because you're going to train your telescope on the universe so you can get mm -hmm. a view. So it turns out, because you can see farther away than other people can, it means the sun sets last for you than for anyone else in the building if oh, you're on the roof. That's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. That's right. So if you go back into the street, to do this experiment well, the sky has to be very transparent. No schmutzy clouds or right. haze or pollution or anything. So what you do is you look at the building and you're on the ground floor and you say, in this instant, the sun has set. Then quickly look at the building and you will see the sun set going up the building floor by floor. Oh, that's, that's so weird. Basically, it's Earth's shadow. You don't think about it that way, but it's Earth's shadow rising up the building as the sun sets opposite from it. Nice. And if you do the math... The sun will set, you know, a 10-foot space between floor, 10, 12 feet. The sun will set one floor per second. Excellent. One floor. So if you're in a 60-story building, it sets a minute later for you than someone wow. on the ground floor. That's pretty cool. Very cool. Do you know the tallest building in the world? Uh, it's that thing in Dubai? Yeah, the Burj Khalifa. Okay. okay. Say it, Chuck. Burj Khalifa, okay, thank which you. is still not as cool as Wiz Khalifa, who I would rather see. <laughs> That's not true. I like Wiz Khalifa, but I'd rather go to the Burj Khalifa. No, I've the Burj never, Khalifa, it's, it's a stunning. I've never been. It's, it's like half again as tall as the World Trade Center was. I mean, it's just huge. Yeah. Totally huge. So, do you know what Muslim holiday begins at sundown? Ramadan. Ramadan, okay? So it, so it begins with the first sighting of the new moon in the calendar month appropriate for that in the, in the Islamic calendar. It's, it's a lunisolar calendar, so the moon matters in this. But 
So it begins when there's sundown, and only at sundown, you have to fast during the day. Beginning that time, you mm. fast during the day, and you get to eat at night. Okay? Mm. Night is defined in this interpretation of the Quran by when the sun sets um, just below the horizon. Right. If you live in the Burj Khalifa... Oh, you're going to be hungry for a little longer. <laughs> a little longer. A little longer. Mm. So... Get down to the ground floor with your snacks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's in the lobby. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Everybody's... <laughs> Chomping down on the food. Uh, so, so the people at the top floor, they have to wait another basically two and a half, three minutes before the sun sets for them to stay according to code. Wow. For, for what this is. That's right. Now, it turns out that particular passage is interpreted differently between two different camps within Islam. So one of them is the exact moment the sun sets below the horizon, and the other one talks about just sort of when it gets dark, sort of mm -hmm. after twilight. Mm -hmm. And so there's a difference in interpretation. When I read the passage, it kind of felt like the end of twilight to me, oh, yeah. rather yeah. than this exact moment, because in that exact moment, it's still very light out. It doesn't yeah. all of a sudden get dark. See, for me, I'm going to read the passage. What I take away, four o'clock. Four o'clock. <laughs> four o'clock. You hungry, Chuck? Four o'clock. <laughs> four o'clock, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you wouldn't be a devout Muslim. That's no, all I'm this is true. Yeah. So it's a, it's a case where the sunset matters. Now, how about in Judaism? Okay, the beginning of the next day is the sunset of the previous day. Okay? And so the, the Seder and other celebrations for the following day begin at sunset on the previous day. That's right. Okay? Yeah. So what happens if you're in the Arctic at the uh, time of year where the sun does not set? Oh, you're atheist. <laughs> That's it. I no, I, no long, I no longer believe in God. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the time the Bible and, and the Quran were written, the, the Arctic was not yet discovered, right. and the and Earth was still basically flat, and so the idea that you'd have these the, these these um, twenty four hours of sunlight, twenty four hours of darkness, are not manifest in the holy books, and so there was no provision for it. That's all. So I spoke with some Jewish people, and they were telling me uh, that what they do is they they follow the the tradition of whatever their home city is, or they just go go back to Jerusalem and do mm -hmm. it for. So, so they link up with the city. We kind of do that when we go to the moon. What time is it? Is, is it on the moon? Right. It's Houston time. It's Houston, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they are talking to Houston, so, you know, or they were. Okay. So well, that kind of makes sense. The they're religious, they're talking to God. I mean, they can do that. That happens. That's been oh, known well, to you, happen. That's a good one. You got me on that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, when, next time you talk to him, be like, yo, man, how come you told me sundown? No, you sun right. you're, trying, you're, trying, you're trying to starve me? You're trying to starve me, God? Is that what you do? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a movie plot. Like, Chuck comes to terms with his religion you know, yes. in the Arctic. In the Chuck, Arctic. Chuck dropped off by accident in the Arctic. Right. And he's trying to do his religious and, rituals, and, and he exactly, can't. Exactly. I can't. So anyway, so I love sunsets on buildings for that reason. Yeah, uh, and, that's a really cool little. Th I, I, I really want to try this now. Just from a, um, like, go to the Empire State Building, have one person at the top, one person at the bottom, and both taking pictures of the sunset, and, and see how much longer it is for your for your sunset. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I, I, the sun will set at different rates depending on. What your latitude is on Earth, but in right. New York, in New York City, forty degrees north, and it would be true forty degrees south as well. Um, and, and well, sorry, and it depends on the time of year. But basically, it's a, it's a it's a floor per second. I mean, I did the math. Floor per so, second. So we're 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 good on that. I like what it. I like to do, I like to take us out, if I may. Okay. Uh, I want to read to you a, a few paragraphs I wrote reflecting on uh, on September eleventh, if I may. Okay. Okay. Go for it. You can actually find this online. It's called Sunset on the World Trade Center. Okay? You just search for that. You'll find it. All right. Rising a quarter mile into the sky, the World Trade Center's twin towers were five blocks tall. I lived four blocks from where they stood. I saw them ablaze. I saw them fall. All from my dining room window. 
which within 10 seconds of each tower's collapse, offered less than one inch of visibility while the opaque dust cloud of pulverized concrete rolled by. From that same window, blue sky now appears where the Twin Towers used to be. The World Trade Center was a veritable vertical universe. I think about it often. I think about the people who worked in the towers, the tourists who visited the observation deck, the diners at Windows on the World. I think of all those who lost their lives. When I look hard for a peaceful way to remember the towers, I cannot help but think of them as observatories. On the top floor, you could type greetings into a computer that would transmit your message into space by the North Tower's radio antenna for all eavesdropping terrestrials to decode. The towers were so tall that for someone on the observation deck, the horizon was 45 miles away. The distance was far enough along Earth's curved surface for the sun to set two minutes later for the person on the observation deck than it did for someone on the ground floor. If you could have run up the stairs at one flight per second, you would literally have stopped the sunset. Alas, you would have eventually run out of breath or run out of floors. In either case, at that moment, you'd lose the sun for the night as it set gently below your horizon. New York City's Twin Towers have lost the sun forever. But I take comfort in knowing that the sun will rise again each day as it has done a trillion times before. Wow. Very poignant. I have no jokes for that, man. I don't. <laughs> it's just... I just gotta... I gotta let that be. That's... Uh, let's just yeah. all keep looking up. <laughs>